Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Praise God. We're able to be back once more. And God is good. God has blessed us to get to this point in the week. And just thank Him and praise Him for His hand that's been upon us. Before we get into the Word tonight, let us just uh, just remember uh, Pine Mountain, the world uh, revival is taking place. Let's continue to pray for them. By the time you guys see this, uh, it'll be on the last day of it. So let's just let's lift them up in prayer. And, and just pray that God's outpouring would be just amazing. Because that's what we need. That's what we're looking for in this last day and time. That last, last altar call. And praise God that uh, Jesus is going to come and receive his church. So just continue to pray for uh, the lost and undone. Uh, continue to pray for the sick and afflicted that we've got in our church too. And all across the land that this just pray that God's word continues to go out. Pray that for the missionaries, for the the uh, pastors, preachers, evangelists, everyone that is teaching, preaching, and proclaiming God's word, let's pray for one another and make sure that that word continues its voyage and goes forth. Forth, and God tells us it will come back. It won't. It will not come back void. So praise God for that. Uh, just remember, Pastor too, as he's he is doing the the um the revival so and let's continue to remember him you know that the devil tries to get on his back you know he's just like we are we are t tried we are tempted by that devil so let's pray for him also and and all of our our teachers that are in the church also so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we start this. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your precious name, God, once more, God. How you've blessed us, Lord God, to get through, Lord God, another half week, God. Lord God, that you're still on the throne, God. And Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being right there at the right hand of God. Lord, make an intercession for each and every one of us, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for taking our prayers and hearing them, Father. And just absolutely giving us the blessings, Lord God, by that faith that we bring God unto you. Lord, help us, God, in each and every way, Father. Grow our faith in this last day, Father, that we look, God, unto you, and that we, we pertain everything, God, to you. We center everything around you, Father, because you, Lord God, is what is going to bring us home. Lord, guide us, God, and direct us in each and every way. Touch, Lord God, the lost and undone, Father. Stir them with the almighty star. Do just what is needed for them, God, to come, God, unto you. Lord God, I pray, God, for the, the revival, Lord. Bring an outpouring, God, of your Holy Ghost Spirit. And let them, Father, just be able to feel and know that the presence of God is so, so close. That it is a reach. It's a reach of their hand to hold on to that throne room. Lord, anoint them, Father, in each and every way, Father. Whatever is needed, God, there, Father, that they grab a hold, God. And, Father, that they take with them, God, in each and every way. Father, that throne room, Father, and they, you, Father, to carry them, God, with each and every way, God, in their life. Lord, help us, God, in this last day and time. Guide us and direct us, Father, as we draw nearer and nearer and closer and closer, Lord God. And to you coming to get your church, God. Help us, God, to minister unto these people, Father, that are needed of you, Father. Lord God, that need to know what salvation all is about. Lord God, guide us, God, in this last day and time, Father. And direct us, Lord God, once more, God. Remove me, Father. Set me aside tonight, Father, that your word would go forth, God. And help me, Lord God, just to be a mouthpiece, God, in a willing vessel, Lord God, to teach your word. Father, touch Pastor. Touch Sister Mary Jane, Father. His family, Sister... Um, Florence, Lord God, and uh, Brother David, praise God, Father, just hearing those precious tongues, Lord God, that he, he talks, Father, in your house, God, we praise your precious name, God, for hearing those lovely words, God, that come out of those people's mouths, God, that we know that it flows from the top of the throne, Father, help us, Lord God, Father, to recognize these things, God. Father, that it would strengthen our faith, God, in this last day and time. Guide us and direct us. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So in Galatians chapter 3 is where we're going to be tonight. I know last week we was in chapter 2 and I said, Lord willing, that uh, we will finish the rest of it. This is actually what I was uh, studying for last week. And... God said, I oh, won't you read chapter 2 before you read chapter 3. So this is where he has uh, he's brought us to. Last week, uh, we talked a lot about 
the lost and undone. We talked a lot about getting that word to those people and making sure and showing just how important those things are. This is just as equally important. We're going to talk a lot about faith in this one. God has uh, God's just been showing so much in this last day and time. No matter where you look and where you... Uh, where you, if you Google anything about God, if you look, if you watching YouTube and watching the godly things, you know these people that are, that are preaching, that are teaching God's word, they are, they're all coming in agreement that it is almost time to get out of this world. It is almost time. So let us heed those warnings. Let us heed what God is trying to tell us. You know the. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I'm, I'm drawing a blank so much today. I don't know, my brain's not connected in between, I don't think, today. Of course, I, a lot of you will argue when it is, but uh, God tells us to listen to what thus saith the church. Praise God, we need to listen to what He is telling us. The churches need to listen, we need to listen and heed what He is talking about. So in Galatians chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 1, so... O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Therefore, whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? It's telling us right here that, you know, Jesus was set forth in you. But why are we not focusing on the truth? Why are we looking at the evidently the presumed things of this world? Why are we still locked on those things when we still know the complete truth of what Jesus Christ has done for us? But we're still not in that acceptance. We're still not in that faithful truth. Verse number two, this only would I learn of you received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You know, before we go even further, I want to first off tell you, I love each and every one of you. And if God's Word steps on your toes and offends you, that is not my apology to, to, to proclaim. If I personally offend you or step on your toes, that is my apology, and I do apologize. But God's word is true. And the truth, you know, it'll cut you. If if I'm on the wrong side of the fence, it'll, it'll slice me right back to the correct side. But praise God for his word. And what it's saying here right now is, you know, are we looking to be made perfect in this flesh? Are we looking that... We have to follow the law. Are we looking that we have to do these good deeds? Are we looking that, that way back out to in the, in the fir first front row that we've got to be right there to be able to, to lift these other people up, to feed the needy, to, 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 to do these things that people have to see that we're on stage doing these things? No. We don't. God knows our heart through and through. Let us go on before I continue to to do the whole thing in about five minutes. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Let's let's go back to verse number two, and I'm gonna read two through four because I got I got off topic here. This only would I learn of you received ye the Spirit by the works of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain. So before we get completely on down to the rest of it. God gave me a, 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 a my own lesson to me. And I want to share it with you. I want you to know what God just told me when I was studying this 
and it's as simple as a light switch that you can see there's light all around me that you can see that when you walk into a room and it's dark and you flip on that switch whether you think you do or you think you don't you have enough faith in that light switch that when you flip it up or move it in the position then the lights will come on so if you have enough faith to flip that switch and see that light come on that has to travel hundreds of miles to get to your room or to get to the place that you're at where do you think Jesus is doing are we having enough faith that we don't proclaim that light switch anymore but when we flip that light, light switch and we see that light come on, do we say praise the Lord? Do we say praise God? Do we give the praise where the praise is due? And do we have that faith that when we ask and make our petitions known, that He will also grant them? Well, I talked about one Sunday, I guess it was Easter Sunday, about the timeline that is in our life. God has laid out a timeline in, in your life in order to be able to make the most best ending for you, the best ending that is possible to make it good for you. I'm struggling with words here, but make make that timeline great for you to the, to the very end. In that very end, God wants us to be in heaven. God don't want you to burn for eternity. He sure doesn't at all. But in that time zone, there's things that may be cut out of your life. There's things that may not end up where you think you should be. You may not be a millionaire. And you may not be a, 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 a thousandaire. <laughs> you know, you may not you may not have that those perfect things that that you think that you should have in this world. But God still has that timeline laid out for you. And when those light switch flips on, we need to have that faith when we step out into that light that God will show us our steps into that perfect timeline. Let's go on. Verse 5. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham just believed God and believed what he said. So in other words, Abraham had faith in what God was telling him. Abraham knew what God was telling him was truth, was the light, and was life. So he was counted righteousness for his faith to God. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Because God made a promise to Abraham. Moses, we talked a while back, that Moses reminded God of that promise that he made to Abraham. And by making that promise, that intercession started right there. And showed us what just what Jesus Christ was going to do for us. And how he was not only going to die on the cross for us and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. But he was also going to rise, rise on the third day. And he's going to be right there at the right hand of the Father as, me, as you hear me right now. And he's going to be making intercession for us, saying, Lord, let's help him. Lord, God, Father, let's help him. Father, help him. He's making intercession for you and I right now. So why can't we grant him the faith that he deserves? And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall a nation be in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law 
are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. We don't live underneath that law. Now, we need to use it as guidelines. It's not, I'm not saying that you just need to throw it out there and it's done. But what I am saying is, is that Jesus Christ died for us. And by that faith that's happening in Him and proclaiming Jesus Christ, that is our ticket. You have it punched. And on that punch it says believe. And that belief turns into faith on this earth for Him. And the law is not of faith, but that man doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us through the curse of the law, being made of a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Right there, he grafted us in. You know, the Gentiles were not. Uh, Pastor David talked this one time, and I will never forget it. You know, he grafted us in. There was a span of, of a few years right there that, that we did not have that opportunity. And if it wasn't for Cornelius and those others, we would not have that gospel shed to us but that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile. So we also take part of that promise. Praise God. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Through it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disaineth or addeth thereto. So what God promises to you, he keeps his promise. So why can't we give him all of that faith and not worry about the light switch when we flip it up and give that faith to him instead of giving that faith into that little bitty switch that goes up and down. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot to Samuel that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. In other words, God's keeping his promise. God's keeping his promise of the law had to come. But that law was set up for one to be perfect without blemish to walk on this earth. That we would give faith unto the one that walked in a perfect manner. That had no sin and was crucified for us. Wherefore then serveth the law, it, it was added because of the transgressors, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The mediator is Jesus Christ. Because he's the middle that we have to go through. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is what Jesus Christ said. So yes, he is the mediator. It says, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. He is made perfect. You know, he, he could have very well, all three, three in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost could have said when it said, let us make man in our own image. When God said that, when he spake life unto us humans, unto Adam and Eve, Jesus could have very well said, this as Pastor says so many times, it's going to cost too much. 
It'll cost me everything. And it did, you know. People want to think about things in a in a monetary way down here. So in other words, God bankrupt heaven for you. God bankrupt heaven that you would have the faith in Jesus Christ to be able to go and to go forth and to have a life that is so much better than what you could by drinking it away, by smoking it away, by doing all of these other things that could get you high in a way, in all of those things, because you don't know your last breath. And that last breath, if it is on and doing such a thing, the Bible tells us where a tree falls, so shall it lieth. Let us not be lying in those things. Let us be focused on God. Now I know this is not a popular topic and it's not a popular subject. It would be a whole lot easier if I just pat you on the back and let you go. But the blood would be on my hands when I enter in. And I don't want that. Verse 21. Is the law then against the promise, the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been, would have been, should have been by the law. So in other words, if there was a law that could give life or could make life, then that would have been where we got our righteousness from. But there is not a law that could make life or give life. So that's where Jesus Christ comes in. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We're all almost through here, so. But each and every one of us has went to has went to school at some point in time, <laughs> and you've had one of them teachers that just you couldn't get along with, could you? You had one that you never done anything right that it was hard that you couldn't. It was so much pressure that you knew that at one time or another that you were going to fail. Well, that's life. That is, that is the law. We could not live by that law. But when Jesus Christ come, and our faith is getting put in Jesus Christ, he no longer picks up that paddle. He does it in so much different way. You know, if you were raised like I was, all it took was mom to tell you, I'm disappointed in you, son. And that's all it took. You were brought to your knees and you knew that you'd done wrong. So when Christ comes up to you, that's not, not what you should have done. When he goes up to the woman in the sand and tells all the others to cast the first, those without sin cast the first stone. Now, I can't tell you what he was written in the sand because as far as I know, I couldn't read anything that tells us what he told that woman. But I see it as, you know what? You done wrong. But look, I'm here to save you. I'm here to be for you. I'm here to be right there with you until the very end. Till the last draw and the, the next breath being... In the land of heaven. In glory land. That's how I look at it. So when he gets disappointed in you. When you don't do the right things. 
when you sin and do the wrong things and you know that, hey, I have, I have done the wrong thing. I have, I've messed up. I, I've, I've fumbled the ball. I've, I've, I've not done the correct things I should have. Hit your knees. Cry out to Him because He is the mediator. He is the one that you go to to make sure you can hit the throne, to make sure your presence comes known unto God. He is the one for you. Because that schoolmaster, that one right there, will never degrade you. He will always lift you up and help you along your way. Verse 26. For ye all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you... Uh, for as many as you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither... Now listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you here, and I'm going to explain it completely to make sure you understand. Because it does not say that transgender, it does not say that gays are allowed. It doesn't say anything such as that. It doesn't say he's okay with such as that. So listen very carefully and do not askew what I'm about to tell you. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. What it's telling you right there is it doesn't matter that I'm male. It doesn't matter that uh, that Cindy is period. Whatever you are born, whatever God made you in the very beginning, that is it. What it is is there's no discrimination in you. What it is, I'm no greater than Jill, and Jill's no greater than me. And there's no greater in, in me in a in an African American, there's no greater of a white in a in a, a Mexican or anything such as that. There's no greater thing. We all have a soul. And our soul will either go to heaven or it will go to hell. You have that option. And that is the free will. In verse 29, And if ye be Christ, then ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you have faith tonight, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that promise that was made to Abraham was also made to you. That you will have, and he will bless your seed. They will bless you and take you into a land flown with milk and honey. Praise God for what he can do and what he is going to do. So put your faith in him tonight. And don't worry when you flip that light switch. If that light switch is going to do the right thing, worry about putting your faith in God and not worrying about that light switch. I love each and every one of you tonight. Before we go, let's close in a, in a word of prayer real quick. And I pray each and every one of you has a very blessed, blessed rest of the week and follows Jesus to the fullest. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, once more. Lord God, your grace, your mercy, your guidance, Lord God, of your word, Father, I pray, God, that we hold to. God, in this last day and time, God, we look, God, into you. Father, further and foremost, God, that you, God, are at our forefront, Lord. Father, that what you say and what you do and what your word says, Father, that we obey. And, Lord God, that our faith is put in the correct places. Lord God, that Jesus Christ has has shattered it all, Lord. Father, that there's a... Praise God that when he takes our sins away, Lord God, there is no fishing in that sea. Lord God, nobody can go back and dig them up, Lord. Father, but you, God, have cast them out, Father, and to be rid of us. Lord, help us, God, Father, to praise your name, God, more and more. Lord God, that the people of this earth, God, Father, that every one, God, would come to know you before it's too late. And Lord God, Jesus, Father, we praise your precious name. And we ask, Lord God, the forgiveness, Father, for our sins, Father. But we look, God, unto you, Father, saying, Lord Jesus, come quickly, Lord. Father, come quickly, Lord Jesus, God, to get your church. We praise you and we thank you, Lord God. Be with each and every one of us and guide us and direct us, Father, in the ways, God, that we'd be forfeit, Father, and stay forever in the center of your will, Father. In Christ's name I do pray. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.